Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with St. Barnabas Episcopal Church on October 31, 2024. Today, I want to use the Eucharistic Scriptures for All Saints, Year B. We will be reading Psalm 24, which is found on page 613. We'll be reading Revelation 21, 1 through 6a, and John 11, 32 through 44. And we will begin in the Book of Common Prayer on page 78. You are no longer strangers and sojourners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. We're on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Venite is found on page 82. Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm is Psalm number 24, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 613. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord 
and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson will come from the Revelation to John. Revelation 21, 1 through 6a. A reading from the Revelation to John. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. With them, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Pentacle number 16. The Song of Zechariah. Pentacle number 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people to set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson comes from John 11, 32 through 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, 
If you had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he, not he? Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, to her Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Then the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pentacle number 21. You are God. Canticle number 21. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worship, worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty, unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You are Christ. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. You be we believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to the to glory everlasting. I want to share a brief re reflection on all saints and all souls. The assignment of number one for all saints in the early church was an effort to celebrate not only those name brand saints who have their own assigned days, but to also have a day to celebrate the many less known saints in our lives, those pastors or teachers or mentors or even family and friends, the saints known only to a relatively small circle of people, but who were nonetheless important in championing the cause for Christ. Eventually, an additional day was added on the day following All Saints on November 2 for the commemoration of all the faithful departed, also called All, Saint, all Souls Day. This includes all those loved ones who have gone before us, all God's children who have passed from this life to the next. In our present 
day busy schedules, we often combine the celebration of all saints and all souls and commemorate that on the Sunday following November 1. Now, All Hallows' Eve or Halloween, where we are today on October 31, was traditionally a time for worshipers to prepare themselves with prayers and fasting for the Feast of All Saints. These days, it has become a great secular celebration of all things creepy and scary, and its popularity often tends to overshadow the solemnity and the beauty of the holy remembrance of those who've gone before us and who now dwell in their eternal homes. Today, you may be feeling fearful about many things. We can't lift our heads off the pillow in the morning before concerns about wars and gun violence and sickness and poverty and global warning, warming, even elections, too many things to name, start racing through our minds. I strongly suggest that a good way to deal with our fears and our anxieties is to look and see what those who've gone before us experienced. Look and see how they allowed God to intervene in their lives so that even in the face of great trials and troubles and confusion, they could still be victorious in their lives. See how they protected and encouraged each other when things got tough. See how their sacrifices led to the triumph of good and blessings from God. The Apostles' Creed is found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers begin on page 97. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope.
in vain. The Collect for All Saints Day Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one common and one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A Prayer for Mission Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole Church of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in your vocation and ministry, in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Amen. I'll give you a few moments for your own prayers and thanksgivings. General Thanksgiving begins on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks and for, for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with your lip, our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful, blessed day.